Reconsidering the past. 2014 was the year that brought tragic upheaval to Ukraine. In late November 2013, the Euromaidan started in Kyiv. Euromaidan was a wave of demonstrations and protests for the resignation of the president of Ukraine at that time, Viktor Yanukovych. More precisely, the protests were sparked by his sudden decision not to sign the European Union-Ukraine Association Agreement and instead foster closer ties to Russia and the Eurasian Economic Union. This was the final straw that prompted mass protests on top of widespread government corruption, abuse of power, human rights violations and the unchecked influence of oligarchs. Euromaidan led to the revolution of dignity that took place in February next year, in 2014. After more than 100 protesters were killed by the riot police officers, Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych fled the country on the 22nd of February 2014. And this was the moment when the ongoing war actually began. Using the confusing time of the power vacuum in the country, Russia invaded the Crimean Peninsula in February 2014 and then annexed it. In April 2014 started a new period of the Russian-Ukrainian war, the Donbas War, or the war in the east of Ukraine. In February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine and began occupying even more of the country. This political turmoil provoked a series of artistic and cultural processes. One process that I think needs to be mentioned here is the decommunization. Decommunization, which is a process of removing Soviet-era monuments from public spaces, started during the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. But this process started to expand drastically with the demolition of monument to uh, Vladimir Lenin in Ukraine during the Euromaidan. The start of the so-called Lenin Fall on a mass scale was sparked by the demolition of the Lenin Monument in Kyiv on one of the central squares. More and more people all over Ukraine began to massively destroy monuments of the Soviet past after reports about the Euromaidan activists who died during the protests in Kyiv. Another example of the decommunization reform in Ukraine is the ban of Soviet symbols in public spaces such as the state emblem of the Soviet Union, the Red Star, flags, other Soviet symbols and images depicting a combination of a hammer and sickle. Even though the rage of the Ukrainian community is very much understandable, it can be called quite reactionary. And this process started discussion in the Ukrainian artistic community and widened with a large resonance. Some of the arts and artistic uh, initiatives started to look for a solution where the communist heritage of the past wouldn't trigger anyone, but also where it would be still possible to preserve these artifacts of the traumatic history. So here I want to mention the activity of the Denede Initiative. Denede is a self-organized artistic initiative that focuses on studying and preserving cultural heritage in the context of ideological shifts. This initiative was founded in one year after the Revolution of Dignity in 2015. Since that time, Denede team has been studying examples of the documentization process in detail and analyzing changes in the urban environment that were happening with the new governments coming. The scope of their interest includes the renaming of streets, dismantling of monuments, replacements of Soviet symbols, and formation of new national norms. The focus of Denede is public spaces and monumental art, the cultural infrastructure of the Soviet period and local history museums. Denede finds these artifacts and museums, uh, interferes in their existence, actualizes and in some places fills them with new meanings and concepts. The initiative proposes a critical rethinking of the Soviet heritage as part of regional history. In their practice, Denede consistently emphasizing that the heritage they are working with is Ukrainian Soviet rather than just Soviet, and uh, that so-called Sovietness doesn't reduce the artistic value of the artistic object. Denede invites not only artists but also cultural experts and historians interested uh, to investigate the process of decommunization.
The core of Denedes practice is, or rather was, going to the usually small local museums in the cities and villages all over Ukraine and researching its histories, collections and changes that are happening to them. Within this field research, they created a platform for contemporary artists and cultural workers to rethink the Ukrainian Soviet heritage and create and then present new projects there. After the revolution of dignity, Ukrainian artists keep coming back to the past. The artist who started the discussion about the tendency of Ukrainian artists to resort to uh, producing work based on history is Nikita Kadan, a member of the Rep Art Group, which was mentioned in the previous lecture. Also, Nikita Kadan coined the term historiographical turn in the Ukrainian context. However, internationally, the term was first introduced in 2009 by curator Dieter Rölstrete in the article The Path of the Shovel about archaeological imagination in art. Let's look at what this term means. As Ukrainian curator Boris Pelonika mentions, the historiographical turn is a trend in artistic, curatorial and art critical practices of the beginning of the 21st century, which is characterized by artists turning to history. Within this trend, the artists are mostly rethinking and rewriting official historical narratives through local and personal histories, reviewing archival materials and uh, reconstructing, sometimes replaying, events that were previously on the periphery of history. Even though the aforementioned uh, artist Nikita Kadan works with the historical events successively, the series of works by Nikita Kadan that I want to bring attention to here is titled Pogrom. This cycle of charcoal drawings on paper was created between 2016 and 2017 and is based on photographic documentation of the Lviv Pogrom that happened in 1941. The events of the Lviv pogrom, which is a slaughter of Jews in Ukraine, took place during the summer 1941 in Lviv. For this project, Nikita Kadan uses archival photos and turns them images from them into a charcoal drawing on paper. The artist was purposely leaning into getting eventually a more conditional image by avoiding depicting details which could help to recognize who is the victim and who is the perpetrator. It's important to say that Nikita Kadan also used in a similar way the photographs of the victims of other historical massacres from the same period of time and ethnical cleansing, like the Valenia massacre, uh, victims of the Soviet uh, secret police, as well as civilians and prisoners murdered by the Nazis. At the same time, the black and white drawings resemble real images from old newspapers, which builds trust with the viewer. The work addresses to the problem of manipulation of the photographic images of crimes. As Kadan emphasizes, it is the caption that situates the victim in the time and space, while also pointing to the perpetrators. Within the talk about artistic work with history, I would like to mention the tendency to use such tools as speculation, mystification and rewriting of history. One of the directions of the work with history is to work with archives, either by creating fake ones or by using the real ones but falsifying history, sometimes absurdly. An example of uh, it can be the work Beat Truth Revolution, created by Larion Vazavi uh, for the exhibition of the artists shortlisted for the Pinchukar Center Prize 2018. In this work, Larion Lozovi engages with the materials connected to the revolutionary processes of 1917 to construct an archive of an imaginary event. According to the presented archive, the beetroot revolution happened when sugar magnates sponsored the revolutionary events of 1917 through patronage. Though the story that Lozovi created is fake, the exposition of the work refers to the setting of a conditional historical museums with a series of real artifacts that can keep the visitor confused. Another example of artists who are actively presenting research of historical events and archives is the artistic duo coming from Kharkiv, Daniel Rybkowski and Andrei Raczynski. The artists were working with archives even before they started to present their works in the art institutions. 
Levkovsky and Rajinsky were founders and administrators of the popular public community group called Memory on the social media platform BK. There, the artist collected and published photos, music and videos connected to the Soviet or post-Soviet era. The Ukrainian curator and researcher Ksenia Malik pointed out that artists begin each of their projects with a long preparatory phase increasing the information density, and only then proceed to its artistic reinterpretation. After an over-exhaustive research, Daniel Rivkovsky and Andriy Rachinsky are starting to reconsider and create their artistic response. Here I want to mention their work KTM 5, where authors turn to the archives of the 1990s and encounter blank spaces that they decided to fill. The work is dedicated to the transportation disaster that happened in 1996 in the Ukrainian city Dneprozerzhinsk, now Kamensk. Then, due to broken brakes, the injured KTM-5 tram collided with a concrete fence. As a result of the disaster, more than 100 people were injured and 34 died. The artists presented the archive of the event a museum of the tragedy, where walls were filled with artifacts created by themselves. The artist embraced the challenge of incomplete details in the story, using it as a canvas for historical reconstruction. In imagining and crafting their version of the driver's life before the tragedy, Rivkovsky and Rachinsky portrayed a farewell party transforming into the driver and her friend. I want to finish this video talking about one of the recently created artworks. It is an animated plastic scene film called Lemberg Machine, finished by the artist Dana Kavelina in 2023. This film also delves into the Lviv pogrom that happened in 1941 uh, and soon Holocaust, known as Shoah in Hebrew, during the Nazi occupation. It begins with a masked figure entering a laboratory and encountering voices of the past through a fantastical machine. The device unveils ghostly stories, each scene offering characters a chance to transcend the fate imposed by history. The stories are told in five languages of the city, Yiddish, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian and German, and recount first-hand experiences of survivors and victims of the catastrophe of the Shoah. The film explores the crime's history and its background and consequences. Kavelina highlights the historical violence and complex culture of the Jewish community in Galicia, which faced cruelty by the outsiders and betrayal by neighbors with whom the territory was once shared. As one can see, the artists are still continuing to come back to the historical events of the past. In their works, they often choose to bring attention to the historical gaps and to start a discussion around certain possibly uncomfortable topics and episodes. In these artworks, the tools may change as well as mediums, forms, historical periods, participants, and points of view. However, filling in the missing parts of history, even jokingly, can serve a necessary role for the process of reflection and acceptance of the gone-by events. Mm -hmm.